I look crazy. Um, I'm going to do kind of like a vlog style today because I am working at my other job today. I actually work with the elderly as well and I don't think a lot of people know that. So I care for populations that have dementia, post-stroke care, dysphagia, um, those types of things that the older populations deal with. So I wanted to show that and show a realistic day in my life doing that. And this is how I start every day. I sleep with my <laughs> heatless curls and my bonnet. And then I wake up and I make breakfast for me and my boyfriend. And um, I hang out with the cats in quiet for a little while with the birds chirping in the background. So I'll show you what that looks like actually. This is my cat, Travis. And yeah, he just listens to the birds outside. Travis is very vocal because he was raised by a speech therapist, so. And this is Hazy Girl. Hi, Hazy Girl. Hi, Pretty Girl. They're so cute. Get ready for this transformation. Ta-da! I have some time before my first patient today, so I'm gonna run to my produce grocer and grab some much needed stuff. Hey, okay, so I didn't get to properly explain what I do at this job before I had not had my uh, tea yet. So now that I feel like my brain is together, I wanted to dive deeper into what this job is. Because I think online people might think that I work with just kids with pediatrics. Um, and I do see a lot of kids on my caseload, but I also see young adults and I also see this older population. So with this older population, uh, I my scope of practice, every speech therapy scope of practice is cognition, communication, and swallowing. So I see a lot of dysphagia. Dysphagia is a swallowing disorder, a lot of different types of dysphagia. And we also work on cognition with the brain, meaning executive functioning skills like memory, planning, organization, problem solving, stuff like that. And then, of course, communication, being able to express and receptively comprehend communication. So parts of that are dealing with aphasia, post-stroke or post-traumatic brain injury, loss of language, um, the swallowing disorders, also just general cognitive deficits. So yeah, just wanted to share that. I am now here um, at my first patient of the day. It is a dysphagia evaluation, so an evaluation on swallowing and that was so fun. What lovely people. Um, like I said, it was a swallowing evaluation. The patient has Parkinson's disease, so there's a lot of comorbidities. And I recommended really honing in on some safe swallow strategies, double swallow, cyclic ingestion, stuff like that. So let me know if you ever want videos on this type of work, you know, could be helpful for you. Now, we're going to head to the retirement home. Okay, so we've made it to the retirement home. Right now, I am on the memory care unit. This is for patients at about from four to seven on the global deterioration scale. So people who have dementia and Alzheimer's who are unable to take care of themselves and need significant help. So I just saw a patient where we were working on organizing and orientation. So organizing their thoughts and um, orienting themselves to where they are, where their room is, important events throughout their day, things that really are functional for them to practice. The next patient I'm seeing is working on orientation. She's also working on some expressive and receptive language skills. Um, some confrontation naming or responsive naming tasks. These are really good things to keep the brain moving, keep the gears turning. I like to call them brain exercises because a lot of people can visualize and mentally 
know about physical exercise and physical therapy and how that directly affects but not a lot of people think about cognition and speech therapy so just try to give that analogy and compare it we are lifting weights for our brain so you don't always get patients feeling really excited sometimes they're feeling tired and doing these kinds of brain exercises actually is a lot of work for their brains so just try to be gentle, try to be nice, keep it fun. This is actually one of the main reasons why I wanted to share this day because I think a lot of people think of support the spectrum and think of some disorders or syndromes that people are born with and that is totally true in a scope that I practice but also part of it is supporting cognitive language and swallowing issues that are acquired because of strokes or traumatic brain injuries or aging um, things that happen to people in your life and will happen to people in your life and it's important to remember and know how to support them if you have people with dementia in your life aphasia dysphagia or other medical conditions comorbid medical conditions that are impacting their cognition in any way and would like to know more about how to support these loved ones please leave a comment leave your questions below okay back to work in case you guys aren't familiar with the memory care unit most of them come with these locked systems so that the people who have dementia cannot leave and hurt themselves hello hello Oh, hey, man. Just saw several more patients. Most of them were cognition. We were working on problem solving and orientation, very functional tasks. But then I also saw a dysphagia patient and I wanted to teach you guys something called a lingual sweep. So this is something that we use with patients that have oral dysphagia or deficits in their ability to chew and get the bolus, the food ball, from their mouth to the back of their throat. So one of the things that can cause aspiration pneumonia is having leftover food. It's called pocketing in between the gums or in the back of the mouth. So a technique to help patients learn how to clear out the mouth and prevent aspiration pneumonia from happening is called a lingual sweep. Lingual meaning tongue and sweep meaning sweeping out the pocketing, going like this with your tongue. So I just thought that was a fun little technique to tell you all about. <laughs> I'm gonna see a few more patients and then I'll be done with this retirement home for the day. Okay, we're back in the car. I may be covering for a coworker and going to another retirement home to see some of their patients. Um, I'm waiting for them to respond. So in the meantime, let's go get gas and let's go pick up some things from Walmart that I need. I'm getting an oil change done tomorrow and it's so funny me picking up oil and a filter for my car like i know what the heck i'm looking for or doing but this is a life hack a money saving hack if you buy your own oil and filter from walmart and then just take it to your mechanic they will charge you less for the oil change because you got all the parts and stuff we're just gonna head home i'm going to see my co-workers patients on saturday instead of today which is a huge benefit of this job because these people live in retirement homes their schedules are pretty open so if you can't get to everyone in one day you can just push it to another day let's go feed travis okay that's everything for today thank you so much for watching if you have any questions about supporting the populations that you saw in this video today please leave those questions below and subscribe